Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link in Facebook, Twitter, wherever you can. Uh, today our topic about decency. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all what it's called religion, supposedly they teach uh, what is called decency. And uh, supposedly decency, actually if we, if we search in Google uh, for decency, Islam decency, uh, the Muslim they give us some definition of it. As an example here in the top, it says here, Islam teach decency, humility, and good manner. Muslim greet each other by saying, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And they reply, Wa alaikum assalam. So this is this is supposed to, I mean, an example of the Muslim's difference, like how they define uh, 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 decency. But the Muslim, they will not tell you that the Muslim is not allowed to say assalamu alaikum for non-Muslims. So here you see how fast and how easy from the first search online we find that decency in Islam is a hypocrisy because the Prophet of Islam says don't greet Christians and Jews by saying assalamu alaikum. Not only that, when you see one of them in the street, you have to force him to walk to walk in the sewage. Uh, and here you see the decency when a Muslim he says Oh, we Muslims, we are ordered to greet with the salamu alaikum. Uh, but that is uh, one side of the lie. Uh, trying to make it look like nice religion, but the fact, their, their own definition, you see, they are the one who says decency is to greet people with, with peace. But Muhammad said clearly that you should not do that with non-Muslims. So decency of Muslims is not decency of Christian or Hindu or Buddha. I don't think somebody, I don't know much about Hinduism, but I don't think a Hindu, he have a problem to say to someone who's a Christian or a, or, a, or a Muslim or a Jew or atheist to say to him, uh, peace to you. I don't think there's a problem for somebody is a Buddha to say peace to someone he is not Buddha. But it's a big problem for Islam. So here you see the decency when Muslims they speak about same words you use in your language or in your belief, whatever your belief is. It's false word as meaning, which means it's the same word. As an example, here we go. It's a decency for it's a, it's a must for a Muslim to greet and say assalamu alaikum. But it's a must for a Muslim not to greet a Christian. Unless he is a practicing taqiyah, and this is another, another form of decency. In the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 28, it says that the Muslim, he can lie to non-Muslims in order to protect Islam. Like now, I, I speak to Muslims, I debate them supposedly, but it's not a debate really. Because in order to have a debate with somebody, he have to have a level of decency. They don't have it, for they are allowed to lie as much as they want. No limit. As long they are defending Islam, he is allowed even to take an oath, to swear by Allah, to swear by the Quran, and all of this is allowed in Islam. It's not a sin. While in Christianity, you know, the Lord of the Christians, and I am a Christian, he says either you say yay yay or nay nay and anything else is from the devil which means you say truth in Islam saying the truth is not to be considered as long you are defending Islam as long you are defending Allah as long you are talking to non-Muslims and just to show you an example of the decency of Allah now, not the decency of Muhammad, this is Allah supposedly talking, and Allah is the God of the Muslims. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of uh, Jordan. And the King of Jordan, supposedly he is descendant from Muhammad, which I find it funny, because Muhammad had no children anyway. But you know, uh, uh, and those rulers, all of them, the King of Morocco, he is descendant of Muhammad. The King of Jordan, descendant from Muhammad. The uh, Saddam Hussein descended from Muhammad. I mean, any scum back in the world, he is descended from Muhammad because they are following the big gang member just to, to rule, you know. But anyway, here you will see the Quran and the Muslim believe that we are hypocrite. But look at this. Let not the believer take the, 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 uh, uh, like the non-believers, the hypocrite, uh, uh, as a friend. 
Okay, so this is a guy, he is a hypocrite. We cannot take him a friend. Okay, well, no problem with that. In a preference to a believer, and this, this believer, by the way, he's a Jew. The, this hypocrite is a Jew. Okay, here we go. In a preference to the believers who are sincere, sincere in what? In taking this Jew or non-Muslim as a friend. If he is sincere to take him as a friend, look what the Quran says. And he seek might and honor by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friend. He has no connection to Allah with Allah. So it's decency in Islam not to be your friend. So why they they, they, they lie to you and they say, Oh, uh, I have many Christian friends. Oh, I have many Christian uh, atheist friends. How this, uh, what her name, the Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, she go and dance in the, in the gay and the lesbian festival. So this is what they practice. It's called taqiyya, which means protection. So if I am not in the stage to conquer you and force you into my belief and I want to betray the system until I reach the point where I can take over, then I practice taqiyya. So I am not allowed to take you as a friend. However, if I have to act like as I'm your friend, then it's okay. But you don't mean it. Read carefully, this is not my words. This is the words of the cousin of Muhammad himself, who Muhammad himself, he prayed for him to be the scholar of Islam. Our prophet have a children's? No, your prophet never have a kid. Your prophet is a potent man. This is why there is a chapter in the Quran. It says, Inna kawthar, fasalli wanhar. A man, he did accuse Muhammad that he's cut off, which means his private part is cut off. Why? Because he cannot have kids. All the kids Muhammad he have, those are stepdaughters from Khadija. Muhammad never had kids. All the stories about Muhammad having kids is a lie. Muhammad, he have all these wives. Did you ask yourself, how come, where is the, how, why none of them gave him a, a child? Because simply he cannot have kids. Uh, and actually, Muhammad, I believe Muhammad, he have sexual disability. And we will prove that later if you want. But let us focus on the topic. Seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrite and disbelievers as a friend. He has no connection with Allah. The second you take me as a friend, you are not a Muslim no more. You are apostate, you should be killed. Has no honor, no mercy, no protection. Muslims, they should humiliate him and kill him. From Allah, unless it be that you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, taking it as weird security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them, while your heart is like this. So you have an ugly heart full of hate, but when you speak to them, oh, how are you, Christian Prince? I miss you, man. How are you doing? Really, we miss you. Where have you been? Huh? You know, like you guys, man, life without being seeing you is not fun, man. Where have you been? This is exactly what Islam teach. And the funny, they say that we are the hypocrites when Islam is teaching nothing but hypocrisy. Do you notice? Do you notice how many times they call us they call non-Muslim hypocrite? But isn't this is the hypocrisy itself? So decency in Islam is to be hypocrite to non-Muslims. You know, Muhammad was doing things nobody do. And the Muslim themselves they refused to do it in the beginning until he forced them by the sword. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet did something and allowed his people to do, but some people refrained from doing it. What is that? What is that which people are refrained from doing it? When the Prophet learned that he did delivered sermon, and after having sent praises to Allah, he said, What's wrong with such people as refrain from doing as things I do by Allah? I know Allah better than they, and I am more afraid of, of him than they. People, Muslims, they, they are not convinced with this madman. When people refuse to do something, it means there is something wrong with it. Like what? What exactly? Awliya, stop playing games. Uh, look at this. I mean, just to show you an example of the stupidity of, of those who defend Islam. Just to show you the stupidity of those who defend Islam. Look, this guy, maybe this is uh, the guy from Nigeria. 
stop playing games Arabic word awliya which have several meaning and this in, in this context it's mean protectors and it makes sense preference as protectors is a Muslim anyone understand anything uh, I understand that this guy is a certified idiot you see I'm showing in the screen you idiot your own Islamic translation your own Islamic website and your Islamic interpretation and you are telling me stop playing games and you are telling me what the meaning of this word I mean do you see how stupid even the answer this is one of the signs of being a Muslim the second you are being a Muslim your IQ you don't have it it's fly it's like hashish bye bye hashish I am not saying anything I'm just reading the screen you, you, you idiot and this is your, the prophet cousin Ibn Abbas and this is your Muslim website and this is Tafsir Ibn Abbas and this is your translation Christian Prince and the editor Christian Prince he play with word and this word have been meaning you stupid it's not me who's saying that it's not me who is saying that this is the cousin of your prophet and you are teaching me Arabic now stop me Christian Prince he always play with the word and this word have been meaning and I'm going to get the origin Zach and Eric, what you said at the end? Uh, I did not get that one yet. But can you speak slower and let me open the umbrella because Corona is all over these days. What is this? The Antichrist, Mr. Donald Trump, Antichrist is your prophet because your prophet, he is the one who denied the father and the son and the Bible says that. Get out of here. So the second you read for them, and this is another face of decency of Muslims, just because they want to defend Islam, they are willing to lie. Even we are showing in the screen every word from their mouth. Stop hiding behind the scholar. This guy is saying to me, stop hiding behind the scholar. I will hide behind you. An idiot who do not know two words in Arabic. Get out of here. Don't waste my time. And if anyone will speak like a child, if you are not mature, get out. Bring your daddy. You are hiding behind the scholars. You idiot, this is not even a scholar. This is a companion and the cousin of your prophet. You are a certified idiot. And this is the only one, Muhammad, he prayed to Allah to make him explain Islam. Which means you are saying that the prayer of Muhammad was like fiction, stupid. Allah never answered his prayer. You are hiding behind the sky. You are hiding behind who? Huh? I mean, they're, they're, even their answers not only have a lack of decency, have a lack of intellect. Stupidity. All right. Now, let us discuss more of the decency of Muslims. So, as you see, they are not allowed to take you as a friend. If they see you in the street, they have to force you to walk in the sewage and they have to insult you. As in the Quran, chapter 9, verse 29 says, Kill them, kill the Christians and the Jews, and until they pay the jizya with humiliation and disgrace. But we see more of decency of Muhammad. <clears throat> Muhammad, he claimed that he is the most decent man, as you see. Whenever Allah Messenger ordered the Muslim to do something, he used to order them deeds which they were easy for them to do, according to their strength. Okay, what is the deed of Muslims? Let us see an example of the deed of Muslims. Very easy, they can do. This is the deed of Muslims. Let us laugh together. Muhammad is using the Muslims to grant himself victory for the sake of raping women and money and be a king. So look what he said to them. In chapter of Al-Anfal, chapter of, chapter of killing, the prophet S.A.W. shortwave FM station said, urge the believers to kill. If they wear a 20 steadfast person among you, will overcome a hundred. So look how easy, brother. Look how easy. Here you see the fiction of Muhammad and the lies of Muhammad. 
He fooled those people. He said to them, and actually in, in one of the stories, he told them like the, he saw a dream that the kuffar will be few only. They went there, they got busted. Which means Muhammad's vision was a false vision. He's a prophet of God. And then later to, to, to explain why he have a false vision, he said, oh, I was afraid. Uh, Allah told me, but uh, because Allah, if he told you the truth that there are too many, you will not go. Right? Here you see, Muhammad saying that if 20 of you can kill how many? How many? 200. Which means everyone can kill 10. Uh, this is an American movie where Sylvester started on. He starts shooting everybody and his gun never gets empty. And then when they went to the war, they lost. They get spanked badly. So Muhammad, he changed the deeds. The deeds which they should accomplish. This is deed. Killing, killing people is deeds. Now, lighten your task. For he knows that is their weakness. Like, what, you didn't know weakness a day before? So yesterday you do not know their weakness? So if there are of you a hundred steadfast person, they will shall overcome two hundred. Oof, 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 oof. So from 1 to 10 to 1 to 2? Here you see another proof of false prophet who promised them victory 1 to 10 and they lost. And then he find that oh, this is too much. This is exaggerating. This is a lie. This is stupid. So we will make it 1 to 2. Do you see it? This is the decency. And then the, the verse after it says, it, it is not for a prophet that he should have a prisoner of war and a freedom would ransom until he had made a great slaughter. This is the decency of a prophet. People surrender to you, kill them. You know, I remember when the Muslims, they were talking about Abu Ghraib, you know, like uh, they show you the pictures of... Uh, uh, in jail, American soldiers they are uh, letting the dogs barking at the at the at the Al Qaeda prisoner. Those are sl people. They killed tens of thousands of people. Should be by law should be executed, not put in jail. Here, Muhammad is attacking neighbors and people never fought him, and now he used to ask for ransom so he get money so he can attack more. But now Muhammad. There is certain people he don't want to really to accept ransom for them. He hate them very much. He want to kill them. So he made this verse. Always Allah is ready for Muhammad. It's not for a prophet to ask for ransom until he kill everybody as, as much as he can. As, as much he can accomplish killing. Slaughtering is his duty. And anyone in the chat, he uses stupid uh, 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 like a way to talk to me. ZB and ZB. I will ban you. Either you speak as an adult, mature, or I will get you out. If you do not know how to say my name, get out. Either you are being a kid, or you are being silly, adult, and you have no place here. We are serious, and this is a very serious topic. This is the decency. This is why you see Al-Qaeda and ISIS. I mean, they, they have now more than 80,000 ISIS members in Iraq and Syria in the hand of the American. If, if those are in the hand of Islam, they will be slaughtered immediately. Immediately. Not a single one from those who they are captured from Al-Qaeda and ISIS and uh, Taliban was slaughtered by American after they killed them after they, they, they arrest them and send them to jail. Not even one. Not only that, they released them after, actually. Actually, even al-Baghdadi himself was in the jail of the USC army before, and they released him. This is the decency of Muhammad. What else can be called decency? It is decency in Islam, as an example, to beat your wife. If you go to chapter 4, verse number 34, it says clearly that a man, he should beat his wife in order to make her obey him. Why I need to beat my wife? 
because simply this is the only way to practice decency. The women, she have to learn decency by beating. And what decency is? To be obedient like a dog. Actually, in America, if you have, if you beat a dog, you go to jail. If somebody see me beating a dog, he will call the police and I will be sentenced to jail with no mercy. The, the judge even will not discuss with me. You did beat a dog, did you? A man in charge of women because Allah has made one of them excel upon the others and because they spend their property for their support of the women. So why the decency of Islam? What is the reason that the man is in charge of you? Because he spent money on you. So Islam consider it's like when 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 a when a, when a sex maniac, filthy person, he hire a, a prostitute. Not only he sleep with her, he beat her. Why? Because he spent money. He wanna he wanna use the money he he spent for the maximum. One of his joys is to beat her to pra to practice his manhood by beating a woman, for he is a coward. So because they spend their money on them, so what we do? So good women are obedient, guarding their secret in which Allah has guarded. As for those whom you fear, rebellion, admonish them and banish them in the bed apart and scourge them. Some Muslim translation, they say first, second, third, as you see, it's not exist in the Quran. That's a lie. The Arabic never say first, second. It's up to you to start from where. I mean, stupid Arabic make no sense. The purpose of this beating is what? Is it educating the women? You cannot educate somebody by beating. Is it making the women better women? No, this woman, she will not be better if she was not better. What is the problem? She did not obey the husband. Like what? Maybe uh, make some tea for me. I don't care which translation. This is your translation. And I don't care for translation. I speak Arabic. And you speak Arabic, Samir, don't you? Samir, don't you speak Arabic? Isn't, isn't, isn't it what it says in Arabic? Why you are asking for translation? Oh, I forgot you are a Muslim who pray to Allah in a language you don't understand. So scourge them, then if they obey you, seek not against them. So we beat them until they obey us. So Islam teach the women, teach the, the, the man that the woman is like this. Hey, puppy, hey, come here. Come here or I will beat you. Come here. Okay. That is decency. You see the decency? Do you see the decency? That is decency in Islam. A decent woman is the woman who allow her husband to beat her so she will obey him. That is decency. What a filthy God. If this is decency, what is the stupidity? The question, brother, uh, the brother had cut him. Uh, give him the microphone, please. Uh, brother, what if I am uh, uh, not being a good husband? Can my wife beat me? Brother, the Quran said in chapter 4, verse number 34, many are in third women because they spend their property with them. Uh, uh, brother, what if the okay so because i spend my money on them i can beat them what if khadija who was spending her money in muhammad can she beat him prophet this is prophet what's wrong with you kick him out of here when khadija was spending her money over the prophet can she beat him no do you see do you see the decency this is a lot of decency I mean, Islam is a dripping decency. Islam is leaking decency. I mean, we have like a lot of decencies coming from everywhere. Muhammad, you walk in the street, there is decency coming from his pocket, from his bum, from his nose, from his toes, everywhere. 
decency everywhere. Even his underwear is full of decency. The prophet, he have it all. Do you care? Convert to Islam and receive decency and beat your wife. It is so easy. Islam will teach you how to beat her. And the prophet never said, beat them lightly. Decency, decency, a stupid decency. What the garbage cult, they call it decency. This is decency. Decency that my father will beat my mother. This is the devil. This is the devil. Teaching you faith, calling it decency. So what is decency in Islam is a big sin in Christianity. The Bible teaches us that the man, he should love his wife. And not only that, he had to sacrifice himself as Jesus the Christ. He sacrificed himself to the church. You see the difference? Muhammad Kader saying, guys, guys, a Muslim is, is schooling us, so we have to show, show you their, their answer. We discipline children, so what? Wrong with man beating women, so okay. This is another sign of stupidity and decency of Islam. Because Muslims, they marry children, in case you do not know. Muhammad himself, he married a child. She is six years old and she never have her period until after the age of 14. And now this Muslim is saying to us, will we beat our women because they are, this, they are equal to children in Islam? And actually, not only they are even considered as a children, even if they are six years old as Aisha, this guy is saying to you that women, they are stupid and they have half a brain. This is why we have to beat them. We have to teach them manner. So the Muslim in Islam, he been taught that women, they are children, they are half a brain, they are stupid, and you have to spank them every day to teach them manner. This is the answer of the Muslim. Did you see it? He is beating women because we have to teach them decency. They are like children. So women are children. I have no comment. I guess Muslims are supporting my cause and proving me right. And here we go, your prophet himself, he have sexual relationship with a child. And the Muslim, they fabricate all the lies saying she have her period. And we got them busted in many videos. Uh, and we showed you that she did not have her period until she passed the 14 years of old. This is why she was allowed to play with dolls. Decency, decency. Big word Muslim they use, but Islam does not have it at all. It's the opposite. A Jew's woman, a Jewish woman used to abuse the Prophet. How she abused him? She say Muhammad is a false prophet. She what? She say Muhammad is a false prophet. Okay. A Muslim, he put her knife, his knife in her, in her chest and he strangled her. If there is any punishment for her? No. But she is not a Muslim. I mean, why? You see, okay, you say that a Muslim, if he a Muslim, he became a prostrate, you want to kill him. This is the decency of Allah. But this woman, she is not a Muslim. So why you kill her and she is a woman? And the funny, they say to us, we don't kill women. They say to us, we don't kill women. There's a hadith actually about uh, a man, he killed his slave, his servant, and he have a children from her. Why he killed her and how he killed her? 
let us teach you some decency. A blind man had a slave mother of two, a slave mother, she have, she have a children, who used to abuse the prophet. How a slave woman she can abuse the prophet? She say he is a false prophet. And disparage him. He forbid her, but she did not stop. He rebuked her, but she did not give up. Her, her habit, it's habit. One night she began to slander the prophet and abuse him. So he took a dagger, placed it in her belly, pressed it and killed her. And her child who came between her legs was smeared with the blood that was there. When the morning came, the prophet informed about it. So look, let, let us uh, make, uh, make the image clear. The woman, she is insulting Muhammad. The man, he told her, don't do that. This is the woman. And there is a little child between her legs. I know the drawing is funny, but just to make you understand. The guy, he came and he put a dagger in her chest. And the blood was coming all over the child who is underneath of her. He was smeared with the blood. He was showered by the blood. And what happened next? Here we will see now the decency of Allah Prophet, the justice. When the morning come, The Prophet was informed about it. He assembled the people and said, I adjure, adjure by Allah, the man who has done his action, and I adjure him by the right to him that he should stand up. Jumping over the necks of the people, trembling, a man stood up. This is the blind man. He says, uh, He said, Prophet of Allah, Messenger of Allah, I am her master. She used to abuse you and discharge you, disparage you, and I uh, forbid her, and she did not stop, and I rebuked her, but she did not abandon this ha her habit. I have two sons like pearls from her, and she was only my companion. Last night she began to abuse and disparage you, so I took a dagger, and I put it in her belly, and I pressed it till I killed her. Thereupon the prophet said, O oh, be witnesses, no retaliation is payable for her blood. <laughs> her blood is free. Do you see the decency? The decency is to kill a woman. You have two children from her because she insulted Muhammad. And the decency is because she insulted Muhammad. Muhammad, he will not punish the man. You see how many times you heard the Muslim saying, they quote for you a verse from the Quran says, if a person kill one innocent man, as if he killed all mankind. They quote this verse for us, right? But this verse is not about the Muslim. This verse was talking from the Bible. This is a verse from the Bible, from the law of Moses. And actually even the Quran, it says that. This is the law of Moses. Muhammad don't practice the law of Moses. And how in the world we accept a man saying such a statement? Maybe even she did not insult the Prophet. How come he did not go to the Prophet and say, Hey Prophet, she is insulting you. Or he say, Okay, bring her to me and let us see if she is insulting me, then we will kill her. No, we kill her and we do not need witnesses. And we can say whatever we want because she is not a Muslim and killing a Muslim is so easy as killing a chicken.
This is the decency of Islam. And then they keep calling you or quoting for you chapter 5, verse number 32, where it says that, uh, you know, the one who killed a person without, uh, you know, an innocent person as if he killed all mankind. But what is that you're talking about? This is, this is far away from what Islam practice. So when they say to you an innocent person, they mean a person who is a Muslim. If you remember, there's an interview with the, the guy, his name is Shawadri, Sheikh Shawadri, from, who, who is a refugee from Pakistan in England. The BBC asked him, why you don't condemn the killing of innocent people in, in, in the attack by Muslims in the terrorists in London? He says, first of all, when we say innocent, we mean Muslims. If you don't believe me, go watch the video. If you don't believe me, go and search the video. He's being truthful. He said, when we, first of all, Islam, yes, Islam condemn killing of innocent people. But when we say innocent, we mean Muslims. The guy, he said to him, so are you saying to me that if a person who's not a Muslim is not honest Muslim? He said, yes. I never saw a Muslim, he don't quote this as for this verse, but this verse actually, first of all, is not for the Muslims. This is for Moses. For that cause, we declare the children of Israel, even Muhammad, he agreed that he is copying the Old Testament. But Muhammad, he killed innocent people, left and right. Anyone is not a Muslim, he is the enemy of Allah and should be slaughtered. And you know, if, if Muslim, they will say it's not true, here we go, we can prove it so easy. I mean, Muhammad action is uh, history reported everything, but let us show from the Muslims. This is Muhammad saying, I've been ordered to kill all mankind. The Muslim, they say it says here, fight. Fight to kill, uqatil, coming from the word qatala, which means kill. So I've been ordered to fight and kill, to kill all mankind. Until what? Until they convert to Islam. And they believe I am a prophet. And they pray as we pray. And they eat as we eat. And they slaughter as we slaughter. And then, and only then, they can be protected from taking their money and their blood. Muhammad saying it clearly, he will take your money and he will take your blood. The only way to save yourself from the gang of Muhammad is to convert and uh, prove in front of you. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, this is very authentic. They cannot say we are making things up, right? Allah Messenger says, I've been ordered to fight the people, with people, all people, all mankind. Till they say none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and if they say so pray like our prayer face the Qibla and slaughter as we slaughter and then and only then their blood and their property will be secured to us so who is the thief Muhammad who can secure your money Muhammad the thief like when you say to our Muslims the Christian they've been forced to pay jizya they say yeah to, to protect you we are protecting you. Okay, protecting us from who? From us. <laughs> Do you see it? So, this is the decency. The decency is, I'm going to attack you in your home, and either you convert to Islam, or you have to pay me to live, in order to protect you from me. Muhammad is just a thief. Muhammad is just a criminal. And not only that, you have to eat as they eat, slaughter as they slaughter, dress as they dress. This is why you see a Muslim, he just came as a refugee to England. Suddenly he go inside the store and he start, uh, you know, doing things like ripping the clothes because this clothes he don't agree with it. But the funny, he's wearing jeans. I mean, the hypocrisy is amazing in Islam. Those Muslims, they have, if they don't even know what Islam is about. Muhammad, he says, Man those, the one who act like people, he is one of them. Which means if you wear a jeans, you are one of them. And you see me in hijab wearing jeans and he have many holes in it, fashion. But Muhammad said, Man the one who dress like, act like, talk like, 
He is one of them. Zaykar Nayak can never go out without wearing a suit. Never. So they teach, and he was teaching Muslims, brother and sister, the prophet said that your dress had to be above your uncle. About what? About your uncle. Uh, and if you don't wear it this way, Allah will not look at you under the other night and he will send you to hell. So if you wear a clothes which is not above your own uncle, Allah will send you to hell. That's uh, that's it. This decency. Raving children, raving women, beating your wife, lying to your wife. This is the decency of Islam. But if you raise your uh, dress above your ankle, you go to hell. But Zakir Naik is wearing a suit, and Mimi Hijab, and all those kids, all those little boys of Islam who are trying to teach us Islam, they don't even say Inshallah before they start. When the Prophet says, if you don't say Inshallah, you are not a Muslim. You are seeking the devil in your project. Ibn Umar said, Ra da da da, a a a a a a, is like a k k k. Narrated that the Messenger of Allah, B B B U H, this is like a new Corona 19. By the way, Corona 19, miracle of number 19, here we go. Why Muslim don't make a video about it? Just wait, they will do. I just gave you an idea. <laughs> How he imitates any people in their actions, he is considered to be one of them. Is what? He is considered to be one of them. So if you dress like the kuffar, you are one of them. If you dress like the pagan Muslim, you are not. You are one of them. If you kiss the black stone like the Muslims, you are one of them. Decency of the Prophet. This is the hadith about killing the poor woman with no proofs even that she insulted Muhammad. With no, there's no witness. He did not even ask for one witness. Do you have a proof that she used to insult me? No. Do you have one witness that she said something wrong about me? No. Just because one man, and here you will see that Muhammad is a filthy liar and he is not a prophet. Because in the case of murder, you have to bring witnesses. Even Quran says so. In order to justify why you kill the person who is not in war, we have to just we have to prove that what the story. What is the proof that this guy is saying the truth? Anyone now? He can go and kill his wife, and the judge he asked him, "Why you kill your wife?" He she, 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 he said she insulted the prophet. She was listening to Christian Prince uh, uh, live stream. Do you see uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, Muhammad? Muhammad, he did not even hesitate to make a judgment. Oh, okay, kill her, her blood for free, no problem. She insulted me, huh? Okay, okay, just kill her, kill her. And now everybody is watching. He will say to himself, "Uh oh." If you ever speak about against this idiot, our blood is for free. Where is the witnesses? I mean, a very simple anyone who have a little logic, he will say, okay, let us say it's a crime to insult Muhammad. Let us say, no problem. Shouldn't you ask? Do you have any proof that she was insulting me? As long as this is her habit, it means she used to speak like this in the front of everybody. As long as she speak in front of her master, who is have authority over her, he can beat the hell of her. That means she speak against Muhammad everywhere she go. What about Muhammad? Say, who witnessed that she used to insult me? He never asked. He do not need to ask. He just said she insulted you, so we kill her, sure. Decency of Islam. I mean, I don't know what to mention to you about the decency. 
Muhammad he said the one who attack a kafir and kill him he can rob him you see here it says he can get his spoil this is a false translation it says falahu salbuhu what salbuhu salb is a theft you can steal his money so the one who kill a kafir his wallet is yours do you see it? The Prophet of Allah says, He who kill an, 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 an infidel, he get his wallet. He, he have the right to steal his wallet. Decency. And this is not in a, you know, uh, this is a this is valid until today. It's not this is not for tomorrow. I mean yesterday. This is for uh, supposedly forever for Muslims. Decency. What else we can talk about decency? What about the man who Muhammad he ordered to kill him just because he pray a lot, <laughs> and he got jealous. A lot of decency, my friend. What about killing a woman? She is over the age of 80 by ripping her to pieces when she is alive by tying her legs between two camels. Decency. Mercy of the Prophet. The Prophet was sent mercy for mankind. All this lecture we see in the internet about Muhammad. Lecturer of Muslims about Muhammad focus in two things that Muhammad is very sexy He's very white If you remember there's a video Let me see if I can find it Where the guy he keeps talking about Muhammad look That the guy he came and he saw the Prophet And then he look at the moon and like look at the Prophet He look at the moon and look at the Prophet He look at the moon and he look at the Prophet and then he says that the moon is the prophet face is more shiny more white than the the, the, the the moon this is the decency of Islam uh, and the funny the Muslim they see they uh, they have like a music and sound effect and the guy is almost crying actually he's crying to describe for you the the face and the the eye the eye uh, 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 lashes of the Prophet, the Billy Bomb of the Prophet. I'm trying to find the video so you can see what I'm talking about. I think it was called Description of a Prophet of Allah. Let's see if I can find it. It was by the guy, his name, uh, Mufti Monk. Um, yeah, you can search for Mufti Monk, but uh, I'm not sure what was the name of the video, because this video is hilarious. I've, uh, you know, showing you how much obsessed with the white supremacist cult. Because the Prophet Muhammad, you know, the, the Hadith says, the one who said the Prophet is a black, kill him. You believe it? The one who said the Prophet is a black, just kill him. And then you will find somebody, he is a black and he's a Muslim because they deceive them, they lie to them, they say the Prophet. He oh, he make the, the, the he said the black and the white and the, it's, a, it's equal. This is a fabricated sermon. And actually, as long as we are talking about this, let us talk about ethic. One of uh, the people who uh, make a comment about my previous video, let me show you. I will look for it. Just to show you how people sometimes they are silly and they don't use their brain even when they make their comment. Uh,
anyway, until we find the comment to put in the screen. This person says to me, I was talking about dogs coming inside the mosque and they piss and Muhammad never sprinkle water or order the Muslim to sprinkle water over their poopoo. -poo. The person, the smart Muslim person, I don't know, is a Muslim, he's not, but there's something weird with the intelligence of this person. Say it. So what do you want, CP? You want the person, you want the Muhammad to kill the dog? What do you want? Here you see the, the, the lack of intellect and the limited brain of a human being. Because when we say to you, Muhammad, he allowed dogs to piss in the mosque and he did not get upset. We are not asking Muhammad to kill the dogs. Is that the only solution you have in your brain? So if, a, is a, is a, if, if you are standing and a dog, he come to piss on your leg. Do you have to kill the dog? No. You can push him away. You can kick him away and you clean after that. This person says to me, well, so what do you want? What do you want Muhammad to do? And Muhammad later, he ordered to kill the dogs. All the dogs. And then when people start complaining, he said, well, okay, keep the guard dog. Muhammad, he hate dogs. I'm just trying to find the comment. I don't know where it is. Maybe, maybe this person deleted. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. Uh, crazy people. You know? Do you want him to kill the dog? Huh? No, I don't want him to kill the dog. But Jesus, he flipped tables on people for buying and selling in the yard of the temple, in the house of God. He said to them, you made the, the house of my father a bazaar. Muhammad, he hated dogs. He said, dogs are dirty. Dogs are nudges. Even if a dog he touch uh, your dress, you have to wash it seven times. Then we find that the dog entered the mosque and he piss all over and nobody clean after him and Muhammad did not get upset. Actually, there's a story where a man, a Bedouin man, he go inside the mosque and he unzip and he start pissing. And Muhammad, he said to them, let him finish. <laughs> let the man finish. This is Muhammad when he was weak. When he don't have army yet to kill and slaughter. Muhammad, who have an army to slaughter, he kill anyone if he do nothing. Muhammad, he says, I was victorious by terror. What happened to the terror of Muhammad when a Bedouin man, he came to him and he said to him, I, what about you give me your wife? Hmm? Muhammad, he said, oh, uh, this is the mother of the believers. What happened to the man, the brave Muhammad at that time? He was weak. Aisha, she asked him, who is this man who says such a thing for you? Which means you do nothing about it. He says, he is a fool we have to obey. This guy, according to the story, he have tens of thousands of fighters under his command. So what Muhammad he said? He is a fool we have to obey. Ahmaqun muta'. So Muhammad ethic change depend in his situation. When it's time, we kill the dogs. When the dog he belonged to somebody maybe he is important he pissed inside my mosque i'm afraid to kill him because his owner will come and kill me All right
We can speak about too many things regarding the ethic of Muhammad, but let us focus on certain things. The ethic of Muhammad is that a man and a woman, they can rent each other for one night stand or less than one night stand. That is a very great ethic in Islam. You know, the Muslims always make fun of uh, or they speak against Western. Western who have a boyfriend and girlfriend. And by the way, this is boyfriend and girlfriend thing absolutely is, ha have nothing to do with the Christianity. This is a behavior of individuals. But in Islam, it is the teaching of Allah. Let us see the reference. This is in the Quran and the Hadith. Let me put the reference. I don't know what happened to this website. It's not opening. Okay, let's see. Here we go. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Look at this ethic. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful. The hippie prophet Muhammad. The hippie prophet Muhammad teaching you to be hippie. Hippie hippo. Allah Messenger said, if a man and a woman agree, and here you see the false presentation for Islam, to fix it, to make it look nicer, agree to temporarily. Have you ever heard of something called temporarily marriage? Temporarily marriage. Aren't you even ashamed even to say, even this word, by the way, is not true. There's nothing in Islam is called temporarily marriage. There is muta'a. Muta'a, sexual joy relation. It's not marriage. It's not just temporarily. It is not marriage. And just to show you how stupid this statement let us say for the sake of argument, Muslims believe in temporary marriage. For what? For sex. How that can be different from prostitution? A woman and a man, they agree to have sexual relationship in exchange of money and sex. My friend, don't change my topic. You see, focus with me, focus with me. Why, why people ask me to talk about things? Don't you see we have a topic? Focus with me, please. Talk about Aisha being 18, 19. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You, you can search on Google right now and you will see that all Muslims agree that anyone who say Aisha, she was 19 when she married the Prophet is a liar. Actually, Aisha, she was 18 when Muhammad died. So Aisha, she married Muhammad after his death. Those are silly, stupid argument, but because they are ashamed of the ethic and the decency of their prophets, so they decide to change and fabricate. But Muslims, the scholars, they say, they make a fatwa, says anyone who say that is a stupid, is not a Muslim. But focus with me. We are going to call Zakir Naik, and let's see what Zakir Naik will explain to us temporarily marriage. Ta -da ta -da ta -da ta -da Hello, Zach and I. Good morning. I did not call me. Zach and I. Hold on, man. I will call you. I cannot. You are the only one I can call. Good morning. Find them all. I think my number. How you found that number? Zach and I. You post it in Facebook. Good morning. I did not post it in Facebook. This is my third third wife. She posted for her friend. And why you are my my wife uh, by Facebook? Uh, uh, I wasn't in your wife Facebook. She your wife. She sent it to me. She said, "Call me." Hello. Hello. Good to breath. You're a liar. There's no way my wife she would do that. Uh, because you said to her that going to divorce her, and now she is seeking temporarily marriage with me. Muta. And she said she is not happy with you and you are not doing some stuff. So she gave me the phone number and now I'm calling you. Good and You are a big fat liar. 
First of all, my wife is very decent, and she is not going to practice muta. Zakir uh, Naik, are you saying that women who they practice muta, they are not decent? Exactly. But isn't this what your prophet said that uh, any Muslim man, any Muslim women, they can share the bed together for three days, three nights. If they like it more, they can increase. If they don't like it, they can decrease. So how that can be not decent if your prophet teaching uh, teaching it? That means your prophet is not decent too. Good to breath. You are stupid and you are a fool. Let me explain to you. Okay, let me say you are a very horny. Yeah, very what? Very horny. Uh, uh, very what? Very horny, horny. Uh, uh, can you explain to me what this word means? Okay, I'll explain to you. As an example, once there was a woman, she was walking in the front of the Prophet. And the Prophet, he get excited. So he went to his wife and he ordered her to take off her panty. And he did boom, boom. Ah, this is horny. So is that the ethic of a prophet to see a woman walking by and he get horny by looking at her bum? First of all, he was not looking at her bum. He was looking at her breast. Uh, okay. Okay, so he was looking at her breast, but is it okay for a prophet to look at a woman? Breast? And she is not his? Is that the decency? Is that the ethic? How he do that? I, I don't understand. Are you there, uh, Zachary Nag? Chris and Prince. First of all, the Prophet, he look at him at he leave because those are Muslims. And he has to look at them. As an example, if I'm a Prophet and the woman is walking in front of me, I have to look at her to be sure she's okay. So first, he look at her ass, to be sure that her ass is in the right shape. And he look at her breath, to be sure that her breath are round and beautiful. Otherwise, he will pray for Allah, so Allah will give her big boobs. Do you see, my friend, the ethic of Allah? Thank you, Zakir Naik. You can go. I'm not going. And I'm going to continue with it. Hey, Zakir Naik, I'm going to continue my life, man. You just leave me alone. First of all, why you are making those story? Are you telling me you never saw a woman walking down the street and you look at her ass? Yes, Zakir Naik, may Allah ask you. First of all, this is not about me or you. This guy is a prophet of God. And he was teaching you that you women should wear burqa and we should not look at them. So why we force her to wear burqa, but yet the, the prophet himself is staring at women walking down the street and he get horny, which means he is looking so, so much and he is thinking about sex to the point he could not. He leave his friends sitting outside of his door and he go to his wife and he order her to take off her panty. Guys, read the name of the chapter. Recommendation to the one who sees a woman and is attracted to her to go to his wife or a slave woman and do boom boom. Do you see the do you see the decency? I mean, we have to admit this is decent. This is this is the highest decency in the world. I mean, Islam is dripping decency. While Jesus saying, if you see a woman, she is not yours, it's better to take off your eye. Muhammad saying, if you see a woman and you, to, and you look at her, why you are looking at her in such a way? Women walking down the street. She is not coming to your house naked and she is not walking in bikini. So why you are looking at her in such a way? This is the advice of the decent prophet. If you are horny, if you saw a woman, you are walking down the street, man, walking down the street. Man, look at this, man. Hey, prophet, is that uh, how you whistle? Huh? You are saying, you are looking at her bum and you are doing this. Is that like uh, the Arab at that time, they whistle? Uh, yeah, we used to whistle like a camel. What is this? This is the decency. So it's decency to hire a woman to rent her. It's a decency uh, to do temporarily boom, boom. Now, the boom, boom decency, uh, we have to be honest, have a lot of conditions. It's not easy as you think. It's not easy. I will explain to you, brother and sisters. 
as an example, you are going in the elevator and you see a decent Muslim woman wearing burqa. You say to her, how much you charge me to do boom boom for two hours? If she agree and she say, okay, I'm available uh, uh, <clears throat> and uh, I will charge you $10. And you agree with the money. And then you do it in the elevator, brother. Do you see how tough Islam is? Too much ethic. The ethic of the Prophet. And not only that, actually, the Muslims agree that this is considered as a kind of rental. Kind of what? Rental. You rent a woman? Read carefully. In some words, a special term is applied to women who participate in muta. This is what we are talking about. Muta. Muta means joy, sexual joy. Musta'ajara. Musta'ajara means rented. Or rented women. Muta is considered as a kind of rental. Because general, a man basic in is a kind of, in this kind of marriage. They call it marriage. They call it marriage. The ethic. Look at the ethic. Look at the ethic. Kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment of a woman. And in return for this enjoyment, the women receive a certain money or a property. Me. Me, that's. And you are telling me Islam is not a great religion. What's wrong with you? Why you don't see how decency is a dripping all over from Allah teaching? Hmm? What's wrong with you? Don't you see how beautiful the situation is? The funny, the Muslim, they say, oh, this is forbidden. This is a Shia practice. This is Quran, my friend. This is Quran, what Shia practice. Muslim Sunni, they claim that later Muhammad, he changed his mind and he forbid it. And this is an example of the corruption of this cult. Why you allowed it and why you forbid it? Because people, they start talking about you and how filthy you are. The Christian and the Jews. Official prostitution by the teaching of the God Allah. Call me now. Muta. Let us do muta. Muta for everybody. Brothers and sisters, in Islam we teach decency. And the Prophet is very practical. So, brother, let us say you are a bug. And you are horny, and that is bugging you. So what do you do? A brother, you hire another bug. So you can do bugging together. A lot of decency. I mean, this is not only, I mean, who can beat this decency? We have to be honest here. Who can? You cannot. What's wrong with you? Don't you see how amazing the teaching of the prophet? Decency. I mean, who can beat Islam with decency? Can you? You cannot, brother. Lecturers and speeches and teaching and the brother Allahu Akbar the woman she have to cover herself a brother and talking about covering yourself 
I find it hilarious that the Muslim woman she have to cover herself, but she been ordered to give her breast to a stranger so he can suckle them. Decency. I know the topic, you know, I'm, I'm putting this insect, uh, better about putting something else. You know what I'm talking about, the brother and sister. It's haram. <laughs> oh boy. So, shall we continue talking about decency? You can rent a woman. And now a woman who have no milk, she's been ordered to give her breast to a strange man. And then Aisha, in order to meet anyone, she ordered her nieces so they can suckle anyone who enter upon them. Which means Aisha, she have a secretary and they are her nieces and her sisters. If you want to see Aisha, you have to go to their rooms and you have to suckle their boobs 10 different times. Ten different time in ten different days. Not like don't think it's like one hour, two hour. No. You have to it. You have to do it in ten different time. Until you are satisfied. Not only you do it, and by the by the way, those women they don't have milk, so you are suckling what exactly? You are suckling what? Her breast. The Imam of Al-Azhar, just a few years ago, he made a fatwa that any woman she want to go in the bus or a train, she have to suckle everybody. Muslim, Egyptian, they went so crazy because they did not know that. He told them, this is what the Prophet said, what's wrong with you? It's not me. This is the teaching of the Prophet. And Aisha, she will not allow anyone to enter upon her unless her sisters, as you see, we are not saying things from our pocket. I mean, it's in front of you. Do you see the decency? Yeah, actually, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, uh, this book is designated to talk about some of the sex and, uh, in Islam. Not all of it, because if I want to talk about all six teaching of Islam, I will spend like maybe I will, I will make maybe 100 books. But I made Sex and Allah book, uh, which you can find on Amazon, to speak about certain things to give you an idea that this is a very sexual cult. Sexuality. Islam is based in sexuality. Islam is not based on God. God is just to make you accept this sexuality and then die for the sake of this sexuality. So in order to contrain, control your mind, I have to sell you out the idea that it is possible. So Muhammad, he have two strategies sexuality in earth which muslims can have so go attack them this is why muhammad he says attack the roman so you can get the blonde girls attack what attack the roman so you can get the blonde girls muhammad even he went to his own son wife and he did according to muslims not to me he flirted with her when she was married and not only that the muslim they say that after muhammad he saw the women and he flirted with her and he said to her praise be to Allah the one who made my heart a flip for you in her house the filthy woman obviously she is sleeping with Muhammad she is cheating in her husband she said each time her husband Zayd her husband his name is Zayd each time Zayd he tried to have sex with her his penis is swell this is one of the miracles of Allah Prophet. I mean, isn't it obvious? 
that your penis will swell if the prophet he like your wife. Thank God I am not married. Because if the prophet is alive now and he see my wife, he will like her possibly and then my <clears throat> will swell. And imagine the Muslims, they don't have a shame to say so. Ethical. This is a very ethical religion. You know what? Because we are talking about it, so Muslims will say, it, this is not a true. Where you get this from, brother? Let us show it. This is the official government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Government website. This is not just a website. This is a government official website. It's in Arabic, but we can do uh, something, you know, we usually do uh, as a solution, not the best solution, but as a solution. You will see the Muslim, they speak about Muhammad. He have, uh, you know, like he have a privilege. And the privilege of Muhammad is sex. And, you know, uh, uh, Zainab, she said, that after the prophet said to her, and I'm going to read, Just see my min atam min Quraysh. Yummy, yummy, how so sexy, man. That's description. Look at this description, brother. Fahawiha. What the heck? So he fell in love with her sexually. Let us translate to Google, you see, because uh, uh, maybe Christian Brands is not uh, saying the truth. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see where it says. Hmm. Let us see where the story. Right, here we go. Uh, the prophet he came to Zaid a day. One day he came to Zaid to the house of Zaid, and he saw Zain, uh, Zainab there standing, and she was beautiful white. And in Arabic, it says she is like, you know, fat. The, you know, in case you do not know, uh, I'm just using the word. I mean, uh, the, the Arab in the old days, they used to sing even for women who they are overweighted. Or let us say, they are, we call them like they call them big. So, because if you are skinny at that time, you are not beautiful and there is something wrong with you. So, the more she is big, the more she is yummy at that time. So they are describing her that she was big, so big, so huge, and she was white. With this is the favorite color for the man to sleep with for women. And she is the most complete woman of Quraysh in her beauty. And then he said to her, "Glory to Allah." He flipped my heart for you. See, translation is not good, but we, you know, we are fixing it. Zainab, she heard. The prophet. So the prophet is a flirting with the wife of his son, and then she mentioned it to Zaid. So Zaid decided to divorce her. <laughs> Do you see the ethic of the prophet of Allah? Look at this filthy man. He go to the house of a man. The Muslim they say, okay, he is adopted son, not son. That doesn't matter. He is a son or not. First of all, he's a Muslim. Secondly, he is very close to him, to the point he made him his son. I mean, he's not only a friend, he is a person who is considered as a son. So you go to the house of your son by adoption, or a friend, let us say. And then when the husband is not there, you flirt with the wife. And then the filthy wife, obviously she is cheating with, the, with Muhammad already, they are sleeping together. She told her husband, uh, by the way, the prophet today he came to our house. Guess what he said to me? Guess what he said to me? Hey, what he said? He said to pray a lot. He said no. Uh, did he say uh, you should fast more? <laughs> I don't fast. Uh, what he said to you? I give up. He said 
you're sexy and you know it. What? <clears throat> Actually, he said, uh, praise be to Allah, my heart flipped for you. Prophet of God. And then Allah, messenger, the man, he came to him and he says, but after he heard the story, obviously, it, now he knew that his, his father is coming to his house. He is doing boom, boom with his wife. It's obvious. And now it's stinky to the point the women, she don't even feel ashamed to tell her. Like she is, he did not get upset. No, he cannot. Muhammad will kill him. The woman is not upset. Did, did you notice? The wife, she is not upset. Do you see how decent the wife is? Obviously, the wife is a whore. She did not say to him, the, your faithy father, he came here. Do you know what he do? No. She loved it. And then Allah, he made a verse in the Quran, says to Muhammad, why you are saying to the man? The man he came to Muhammad says, "Give me permission to divorce my wife because she is, uh, she is, uh, you know, she hurt, she hurt my feeling. Her tongue is bad. Okay, if her tongue is bad, why Muhammad will take her? That means she is a bad Muslim woman, because the Quran says the best of you is the one who is obedient to her husband. Correct? Chapter four, verse number thirty-four. If this woman is so bad." Then why Muhammad want to take her? But this guy, he felt, okay, they are doing boom, boom in my back. I better let her go and let him have her. Otherwise, he might kill me. So he went there and look at the hypocrisy of Muhammad again. The man, he said, let me divorce her. You know, I don't really like her. He did not say to him, I, she told me that you came to my house and you are cheating with her, doing boom, boom, which is obvious. He didn't say to her, to him, oh, I, my wife, she told me that you are flirting with my wife. Actually, this man, Zaid, if he have a simple little decency, he will go to Muhammad and he will say to him, in the minimum, I mean, if you cannot, if you don't dare to fight with him with a sword after he flirt with your wife, will say to him, don't come to my house anymore. He don't dare. He's a coward. And then he said to him, let me divorce my wife. Look, look at the hypocrite and the man who have no decency. He said to him, oh, fear Allah, don't divorce her. Don't divorce her, man. Don't divorce her. Look at the filthy. Five minutes ago, he was in the house of the husband, flirting with the wife. And now the husband came to him, saying, oh, I want to divorce her. He says, no, keep her. Keep her, man. Don't divorce her. And Allah, he made a verse supposedly saying, why you are hiding what is in your heart? Huh? You like the women, you want to do boom boom to her, huh? This is decency. This is decency. If this is decency, what is faith? And as you see, this is the Muslim interpretation. And not only that, Zainab, she continues, she's saying that each time this guy, her husband, uh, he tried to sleep with her after the, the prophet he flirted with her Allah he made his penis as well which is a clear proof that Muhammad is a prophet Allah he made the penis of the husband as well Why Muslims don't make a video about this miracle that the Prophet of Allah, if he like your wife, Allah will make a penis of the husband as well. Let me see where we can't find in the translation. I'm looking because this is the, the, the English translation now. Uh, I want to see where it says that his penis as well. Hold on. Okay.
Here we go. Translation is not good, but it's enough to, you know. So Zainab, she said that in the account of Zaid, each time he tried to get close to her, his penis is swell. Each time he wanted to get closer to her. Do you see it? Do you see it? Each time he tried to do boom, boom with her, Allah, he make the penis of the husband swell. And you are telling me Muhammad don't have miracles. How many of you Muslims, you're a prophet, he like his wife and your penis as well? Did the penis of Umar ibn al-Khattab swell in the time of Muhammad? Because obviously Muhammad is was looking around whoever women she see, he see. Huh? Is, there, is, is this the only guy Allah made his penis swell or all the Muslims? So my friends, when Islam is speaking about ethic and sin, Islam itself is a sin, has no ethic. I mean, we can keep mentioning stories, you will not believe it, how filthy this man is. Nobody in the world is speaking about ethic as much as Islam. Nobody, but Islam has zero ethic. Nobody speak about how we clean, you know, well, how we clean we are. The, the kuffar are najis. Quran teach that the kuffar, the, the, the non-Muslims are filthy, dirty. This is why there's no gozun in Saudi Arabia. Mecca and Medina, you cannot enter them. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ najis. Non-Muslims are filthy. And clean and the Muslims they try to make it look nice and they say and pure and clean this is not only an cure this is about nothing can wash you to the point we cannot let you even enter the land if you enter it we will kill you this is why it says kill the Christians and kill the Jews and the verse after it for they are any clean they are filthy and the funny, the Muslim, they say, Islam is against racism. Islam teach that Islam is a race and everyone else is filthy. And the Quran in front of you. Actually, Islam teach that Muslims are superior. The white Arab, they are superior to the point. They have the right to come to your country. And they have the right to chain you like a dog. Like what? Like a dog. Do you see it? You are the best people ever raised up to the benefit of mankind. When you see between two brackets, the Muslim trying to make it look nicer to the benefit. I mean, Come on, like this is for the benefit. Okay, how you how Islam practice benefit for us? Fighting Corona? No. Feeding the mankind? No. Building hospitals, schools, teaching people? No. The best of mankind, chapter 3, verse 110, are those who bring them with the chain round their necks till they embrace Islam. Do you see it? This is the duty of the ethical Muslim, the decent Muslim. All those Muslims who go in YouTube, they give you a speeches about, uh, you know, righteousness. This is the righteousness. This is the best of righteousness in Islam, is to go in war and put the chain around your neck like a dog. And they force you to convert to Islam or you will stay as a dog, as a slave for them forever. And by the way, there's no guarantee even if they convert to Islam, they will let you go. Because there's Muhammad and his companion. They have tons of slaves who converted to Islam, hoping they will they will leave slavery after they convert. But Muhammad did not let them free. So when they say Islam teaching decency, that is a lie. Islam is an anti-decency. Islam is an anti-Christ. For teaching of Christ is totally the opposite. One million degree, the opposite of the teaching of Muhammad.
And additional to the missing of decency in Islam, Islam is religion, missing intelligence. As an example, when the Quran says, in the case of murder, free for free, women for women, uh, 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 slave for slave. I mean, how in the world you can practice such a thing? So if I am a free and I kill a slave, I will not be killed. I will be killed only if I kill a free. If a free man killed a slave, the other man who owned a slave, he will kill a slave for the other man. Have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? If you kill my wife, I will kill your wife. This is an eye for an eye. Muhammad, he understand the in his stupidity, eye for an eye in his own fantasy, in his own madness. The law of Musa says eye for an eye. You kill my wife, I kill your wife. <laughs> so now we have two victims instead of one. Of one. Do you see how stupid this prophet is? You kill my slave, I kill your slave. So now we have two poor black slaves get killed. And the killers are playing football outside. Decency. The decency of Muhammad teach that the women they have half a brain and this is why they cannot be a witness in the court in the capital punishment and women even if they are allowed to witness they have to agree upon them only in the case of writing to borrow money Muhammad he claimed that majority of women they would go to hell for they have half a brain so it's decency to say that your mother, she have half a brain. That's decency. It is decency to say that women, she will go to hell because she have her period. That is decency. And Muhammad is speaking about the women, they have a lack of intellect, a lack of common sense. Is it common sense to say that women, she will go to hell because Allah, he made her brain half as Muhammad claimed. And because she have her ministration, how in the world this man even can be called anything except a crazy mad maniac? You see, all those stories are hadith sahih. Muhammad explained why you will go to hell. He says, because, because Allah made you half a brain. A woman, she said, and okay, what is our deficiency of the women and her religion and intellect? He said, Ah, the proof of decency, the deficiency of women, that two women are uh, of you is like a testimony of one man. But you are the one who created this rule, you idiot. This is the proof? The proof that women, they, are, they have deficiency in their brain, that because you made Allah saying women, two women equal to one. And then the deficiency in your brain is menstruation. This is a deficiency? You see what? You are the one who have a deficiency. Obviously, you are the one who have no brain and you are the one is a stupid and you are the one who is a, 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 a filthy idiot because if a woman have menstruation, that cannot be a deficiency to go to hell for it. Is, isn't it God supposed to who made her this way? So why Allah will send her to hell because she had menstruation? Have you ever heard of such a stupid prophet before? The Messenger of Allah delivered a, a, a sermon said, O oh women, O oh women, give a charity, for you are the majority of hellfire. Okay, why? Muhammad explained why. For you are suffering. Oh, you curse your husband. Why you curse your husband? But the husband, he cursed them too when they fight. Doesn't matter. The women are going to go to hell. For you have deficiency in, you, in intellect and your religion. This is the reason. And what is deficient in, what is the deficiency in the religion she had menstruation and what is the, the proof of deficiency in the brain witnesses in fact if it's come to witnessing women they have way better memory if you take a woman if you are married huh, try this let us say you went to a wedding party a friend or a family member and you go home and let one of your children who was not there or was there? Ask him both of you what happened there. 
you will see the husband he is not he cannot report anything the woman she will report to you what the bride was wearing what her eye what, the hairstyle the earring the color uh, the, the structure not only the bride I mean all the women and all the men and what the food the guy will not even remember the food he ate so how women she cannot be equal to witness to a man and, and the reason is deficiency in the brain when women are more into details I mean I do not need to prove it to you Women, they can report details a man will not even notice, even if he try to. So this filthy Muhammad who have no ethic, he put women down, treat them like dogs. Actually, even, even Aisha, she said, you made us equal to dogs. You believe it? Aisha, she said, you made us equal to dogs. Because what? Because Muhammad said, three things disturb a Muslim prayer, like they feel like destroy a Muslim prayer: a dog, and a woman, and a donkey. So women come in the middle between what? Between two creatures, dog and donkey, for Muhammad. Do you see it? And that is supposed to decency. Decency that your mother Muhammad is between a dog and a donkey. This is how much respect you have to your mother That a dog and a woman and a donkey Are equal in the eyes of Allah How this man can be considered for a second a prophet of God unless you are really mentally ill? Not only he disrespect women, he disrespect every female, including your mother, your daughter, your sister, your wife. You see, those who think down about women they are thinking down about themselves because all of you you are born from between the legs of a woman so if this woman is equal to a dog and a black dog and an ass well you are less than the women then because you are coming through a woman you are you were inside this woman actually you are the egg of the women and just because you are born with a penis does not make you higher. This is a very shameful religion. Can you post number of verses? My friend, the admin, uh, thanks to him, he always posts the reference I am showing in the screen. So just follow with the admin, you know. And anytime you want to find something I show in the screen, especially if it's in English, just type exact few words, exactly the same in Google, you'll find them. Like here, as a woman and a black dog. Search in Google, you'll find the hadith. Or in this website. So... Muslim, they might use the same words you use, like as we mentioned to you, like adultery, but Islam teach adultery, promote adultery. Islam teach you cannot steal, but Islam teach you can steal non-Muslims money. Hindu, Buddhist, atheist. Islam teach don't kill, but Islam teach you, 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 not only you should kill, it's a duty to kill non-Muslims, who they are refusing Islam. So when Muslim, they speak about an ethic, the ethic of Islam is flexible. It's about them, not about you. They can steal your money. They can take your wife. They can rape her. They can kill you, torture you, destroy you, humiliate you. And they are not allowed to greet you with salamu alaikum, which Muslims they describe as decency of Islam. 
the prophet had ordered us when we meet each other to greet each other but he forbid them from greeting christians and jews so you might say why a muslim then he say to me assalamu alaikum he's lying to you this is taqiyya and this is the interpretation for it we show it to you before chapter 3 verse number 28 and this is the link for it It's called taqiyya, which means protection. So he said to you whatever you like to hear in order to make Islam look better. Maybe he can convert you to Islam. So I want to say thank you for being here, guys. And uh, uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow, maybe to tonight, I will go and I will be live in the Quality of Life account. So if you like to join us in the Quality of Life, maybe the admin can post the link for you. The quality of life uh, where we speak about a different topic so uh, subscribe there and maybe tonight which will be morning time for Asia we will go live there and again the topic there have nothing to do with this time we speak about everything you can see like uh, whatever videos we have there to get an idea what we talk about in that channel because always a Friday usually Friday Saturday Sunday we go on that channel and the rest of the week is in this channel to bring Muslims to Christ we love Muslims, we don't hate them, never hate them. We are exposing Muhammad and his faith. We are not speaking against Muslims. We are not people who hate Muslims. We will never hate them. But we have to fight such a garbage cult who can destroy. This is this is the coronavirus itself. When a man, he hate his neighbor just because he is not a Muslim. That is Corona, dangerous. When somebody go explode himself, that is Corona. Islam killed more than 80 million Indian in India alone. All this Corona did not even kill until now, maybe, I don't know, 50,000. What Islam killed in a day, Corona will not kill in a century. That is the truth. The Quran virus, the miracle 19, imagine, even the Muslim, they say, Quran, miracle number 19, which we got busted many times. So I want to say thank you all for being here with our love for all Muslims. We love you. We want to save you. Islam is a fraud. And we are here to expose all frauds, starting from the biggest fraud ever in history, Muhammad. Join us today or later in the Quality of Life account. If you care to join us, you can subscribe. And you will receive notification and we post in patreon and facebook when we go live so you can be updated thank you guys for being here may the lord bless you christ is lord islam is false and see you soon again